Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. Gold Rush Will Mitch Blaschke Go Into Mining For Himself? Mitch Blaschke plays a vital role in Parker Schnibble's team on Discovery Channel's Gold Rush. The mechanically-minded 34-year-old is quick to spot and analyze problems, and then figure out ways to fix them. Sometimes it requires quick thinking and a lot of pressure using heavy machinery. Now, fans wonder if he should go mining for himself. Parker Schnibble reams to respect Mitch Blaschke. Parker Schnibble seems like the kind of person to look after his valuable crew members. As his right-hand man, probably, Mitch earns good take-home pay for his time working on the mining operation. And so he should. After all, sometimes it seems as if Parker asks for the impossible from him. Still, he steps up and does a good job, and the entire operation benefits from it. Mitch Blaschke has no problem working with any skilled employees. In fact, cooperation between himself, Pascal Castanve Lambert, and Tashiana Costa helped with the sluice problem. It's a hard job, and there are setbacks. However, reliable Mitch is always willing to go in and get the job done. So, some Discovery fans wonder why he doesn't go on his own and make more money. Will the Gold Rush star go mining for himself? On Reddit, Discovery Channel viewers talked about the possibility that Parker's right-hand man might go it alone one day. The OP said that he's learned plenty of things about mining. Gold Rush fans comment on Mitch. Some people talked about Brennan Ruolt who jumped across to Rick Ness. That didn't seem to be a good decision. Meanwhile, others talked about the financial stress of going it alone. I have no doubt that Mitch could go on his own and be successful. I don't think he wants to and I don't think he would enjoy running his own operation. Mitch is a guy who likes working, getting stuff done, identifying the problem and solving it. I think that is what he gets his satisfaction from. Mitch seems to be extremely well compensated. I'm not sure if it's Twitter or Insta he is on, but he has multiple pricey race cars, a classic muscle car that isn't cheap, and seems to live a good life. He may eventually go out on his own but would likely take a pay cut for a few years at minimum. I'm sure Parker compensates him over and beyond, as a business owner you eventually learn to take care of the people who are the best to make sure they don't leave. In the rugged landscapes of Alaska, the gold rush fever was more than a historical event. It was an enduring tale of adventure, risk, and reward. Among the daring souls who dared to pursue the glittering promise of wealth was Mitch Blaschke. Known for his mechanical prowess on the show Gold Rush, Mitch had spent years ensuring that the miner's equipment ran smoothly. However, whispers around the mining camp suggested that Mitch was contemplating a new path, one that would lead him from the repair shop to the heart of the gold fields. Mitch had always been fascinated by the stories of the old-timers who had struck it rich. As a child, he would sit at his grandfather's feet, listening to tales of fortune hunters who had braved treacherous terrains and unforgiving winters in their quest for gold. The allure of the unknown, the thrill of the hunt, and the sheer determination of those early pioneers had left an indelible mark on his young mind. As the seasons passed on the mining show, Mitch's role as the go-to mechanic had solidified. He was indispensable, often the difference between a successful haul and a disastrous breakdown. Yet as he watched the miners sift through pay dirt, the glint of gold sparking under the sun, a thought began to take root. What if he could do more than just fix the machines? What if he could find his own fortune? One crisp morning, as the first light of dawn painted the Laskin landscape in hues of pink and gold, Mitch stood at the edge of a claim, deep in thought. The rhythmic clanking of machinery was a familiar symphony, but today it seemed distant, almost like a whisper urging him to take the plunge. He weighed the risks and rewards, the challenges and the triumphs. Mitch knew the mining business was fraught with uncertainty, but he also knew that fortune favored the bold. It wasn't long before the rumor mill churned out whispers of Mitch's intentions. Some of his fellow miners were skeptical. He's a mechanic, not a miner, they said. He doesn't know the first thing about digging for gold. But those who knew Mitch well understood his tenacity and his unyielding spirit. If anyone could make the transition, it was him. Mitch began his journey into mining with meticulous preparation. He devoured books on geology, mining techniques, and gold panning. He sought advice from seasoned miners and spent countless hours studying maps and claims. 
the more he learned, the more his resolve strengthened. This was not just a fleeting fancy, it was a calculated decision driven by a passion that had been simmering for years. The day Mitch staked his first claim was a momentous one. He chose a spot rich with history, where old mining records hinted at untapped potential. As he drove the stake into the ground, a sense of exhilaration washed over him. This was it, the beginning of a new chapter, one where he wasn't just a supporting player, but a leading man in his own adventure. Mining, Mitch quickly discovered, was a different beast altogether. The physical demands were grueling, the hours long, and the returns uncertain. Yet he approached each challenge with the same methodical precision that had made him a master mechanic. Every shovelful of dirt, every pan of gravel was a step closer to his goal. He learned to read the land, to understand the subtle signs that hinted at hidden gold. And when he found his first few flakes, the rush of excitement was unparalleled. Word of Mitch's venture spread quickly. His colleagues watched with a mixture of admiration and curiosity. Here was a man who had dared to step out of his comfort zone, to risk everything for a dream. It wasn't just about the gold. It was about proving to himself and others that he could succeed in a new realm. As the season progressed, Mitch faced setbacks, equipment failures, harsh weather, and the ever-present challenge of finding pay dirt. But with each obstacle, he grew more resilient. His mechanical skills, honed over years, proved invaluable as he adapted his machinery to suit the demands of mining. He innovated, improvised, and persevered. By the end of his first season, Mitch had amassed a modest amount of gold. It wasn't a fortune, but it was a start. More importantly, it was proof that he could do it. He stood by his sluice box, watching the last bits of dirt wash away to reveal the precious metal, and felt a deep sense of accomplishment. Mitch's journey from mechanic to miner was more than a professional shift. It was a personal evolution. He had ventured into uncharted territory, faced the unknown, and emerged victorious. His story became an inspiration to others, a testament to the power of following one's passion, and the rewards of hard work and determination. As the sun set on another day in the Alaskan wilderness, Mitch looked out over his claim, a smile playing on his lips. The gold rush was far from over, and his adventure had just begun. In the rugged wilderness of the Klondike, a figure stood at the edge of the river, the light of dawn casting long shadows over the landscape. This was no ordinary prospector, it was Jack Sullivan, a seasoned veteran of reality television and a star of the popular show Gold Rush. After years of leading a crew and battling the harsh elements of the Yukon for the precious metal, Jack had made a bold decision. He would venture into the wilderness alone, to mine for himself, away from the cameras and the pressures of showbiz. The decision hadn't come easily. Jack's life was wrapped up in the excitement and chaos of filming, where every swing of the pickaxe and every nugget found was recorded and broadcasted to millions. But lately he felt a yearning for something more personal, more profound. The call of the wild, untainted by the demands of producers and the expectations of fans, grew too strong to ignore. Jack's journey began in a small, rusted pickup truck loaded with essential supplies, tools, food, water, and a weathered map with the promise of untapped gold veins. As he drove deeper into the wilderness, the roads became narrower and the landscape more untamed. Towering pines and jagged rocks surrounded him, the air filled with the scent of pine resin and the distant cry of eagles. This was the solitude he craved, a return to the roots of mining, where it was just man against nature. Setting up his camp by the river, Jack felt a surge of excitement. He pitched a tent, set up a makeshift kitchen, and prepared his equipment. The river shimmered with the morning sun, its waters whispering secrets of riches buried deep within its bed. Jack knelt by the water's edge, panning for gold with practiced ease. Each swirl of the pan, each glint of potential, filled him with a sense of purpose he hadn't felt in years. Days turned into weeks, and Jack settled into a rhythm. He woke with the dawn, worked tirelessly through the day, and spent the evenings by a crackling campfire, reflecting on his progress. The solitude was both a blessing and a challenge. Without the constant presence of his crew and the comforting hum of machinery, Jack had to rely on his instincts and resilience. There were moments of doubt when the river yielded little and the loneliness pressed down on him. But there were also moments of triumph 
when the pan revealed flecks of gold, sparking hope and determination. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden hue over the landscape, Jack struck a rich vein. He had been digging at the base of a rocky outcrop, where the river curved sharply. The soil was dense and unyielding, but Jack's persistence paid off. With a grunt of effort, he unearthed a nugget, its surface gleaming with promise. Holding it up to the fading light, Jack felt a rush of elation. This was his victory, earned through sweat and grit, a testament to his skill and determination.